Greetings and guests, ladies and gentlemen, and to all of our online participants, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to Global Smart City Leaders Forum 2022 at World Smart City Expo. My name is Min Soo Jung from Seoul National University Global Art and DB Center. It's an honor to be here for a master of ceremonies. On behalf of Seoul National University Global Art and DB Center and Seoul National University Innovative Human Resource Development Education and Research Group for Smart City Global Convergence, I'd like to extend our appreciation to the East End speakers and audiences for joining us today. This forum is conducted in a hybrid format for in-person participants here in Kintex, Republic of Korea, and online participants in Zoom and YouTube of World Smart City Expo. And please note that the simultaneous interpretation service is being provided. This year marks the second anniversary of a Global Smart City Leadership Forum. This forum aims to explore innovative and practical ways to strengthen global leadership networks under the theme of global smart city, uh, global convergence between digital twin and metaverse for sustainable smart city. Now I'd like to give you a brief outline of today's program. After the opening ceremony, a keynote speech will be delivered and then we'll move on to the thematic sessions. In the first session, we'll address a wide range of perspectives on smart city global convergence through interviews with, the, with globally renowned specialists in the fields of smart city. In the second session, a presentation will be followed by a panel discussion on the importance of a global alliance and stakeholder leadership in the business model for a new city in terms of innovation center digital twin and metaverse. We hope this forum will be a global platform to present enlightening and accountable global smart city leadership acting in collaborative partnership. So without further ado, to commence the opening ceremony, it's a great pleasure to introduce Professor Chun So Kwang, Director of Seoul National University Global R and DB Center and Director of Seoul National University Innovative Human Resource Development Education and Research Group for Smart City Global Convergence. He will deliver the welcoming remarks as the host of this forum. Please welcome Professor Chun Sok Kwang with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, welcome to 2022 Global Smart City Leadership Forum as a second forum of uh, this kind in World Smart City Expo. Um, I'm very happy to open this uh, forum again with the more expanded, extended sessions and with, in both hybrid way with on-site and also uh, the offline. Um, uh, today, I'm going to actually give a short brief review that what we have done in last uh, forum and then also giving you that some update what we are expected to do. Uh, last year as a first forum, uh, our theme was a great transformation through Global Smart City Leadership 2030. As we know that 2030 is the year that our UN organization committed to uh, uh, accomplished UN SDG and for the sustainability. And we concluded that a very strong need of community of leadership and where we say Global Smart City Leadership 2030 and then we successfully formed such community of a practice and leadership at the time that is called uh, GC, uh, G, GSCL 2030. As an extension of that uh, strategic uh, community building of the leadership, uh, this year we made a theme with a specialized in the great global convergence between data twin and metaverse for sustainable smart city. As we know that we are still experiencing pandemic uh, in certain way and other natural disaster at the same time, sub uh, shortage and also global partnership problem in energy and technology in many other sectors. 
which results in some segregation in the world. There's a very immediate need of the, the cooperation and collaboration in the global leader. And we believe that smart city uh, would be a great, great uh, the tools to connect and interconnect and also let them to cooperate for the sustainability. I'm very happy that uh, today we will discuss more in detail how the, uh, the, the digital twin and the metaverse can be implemented in the uh, effort of the smart city as a effort of the smart civilization. I think more data we get, the, our so, uh, society can be more intelligent and the leaders would be able to have a more rational and inclusive way of decision making and to realize the fact. I think uh, we are here to share such experiences. As a concluding, as a re over the, uh, the welcoming remark, I'd like to give my very special thanks to our congratulatory remarkers, uh, Mr. Uh, Jason Arford, and our partner and friend, and the special representative, World Bank uh, Korean office. Thank you. And again, also a special thanks to uh, the Mr. Uh, Moon uh, song yo the Deputy Minister of the Terrestrial and Urban Development of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transportation of Republic of Korea. Thank you very much for your special uh, remark. And also I give my special thanks to online to Mr. Darren Soto, who is also a congressman and then U.S. House Representative of the United States. There's a, the ninth congressional District of the Florida, and for your also congrats remark to represent the United States and also policy uh, maker. And also, I'd like to give my special thanks to also Don Fisher, who is also the very strong global leader as account manager, who will be giving us uh, what kind of the smart city initiative is actually happening in the United States, which can be uh, some of the same cases we are going to deal with today. Well, uh, I will make it short uh, as a greeting and also my special thanks to goes to all our interviewee and also the moderator, my friend, Dr. Don Basile, will be moderating the second panel session for with all these uh, distinguished panel sp uh, speakers. I greatly appreciate and also I greatly appreciate all the attendee today who are representing the leadership of the global world. I thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the forum. Thank you. Please give a big round of applause, Professor Jun Seok Kwang. Thank you very much for your wonderful remarks. Now, for the first congratulatory remarks, it's a great honor to invite Mr. Jason Alford onto the stage. He is a special representative of World Bank Group Korea office. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Jason Alford. So thank you to my friends, uh, Ms. Chung and Professor Huang, uh, for your welcoming remarks also. It's my honor to speak on the same stage as both of you. Good afternoon, distinguished guests and fellow participants. My name is Jason Alford. I'm the special representative of the World Bank Group here in Korea. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today at this Global Smart City Leadership Forum during the World Smart City Expo. First, I would like to congratulate SNU Global R&DB Center for hosting today's forum, and we hope that this will allow us to discuss important issues at the interface of cities and emergent digital technologies. My organization, the World Bank Group, works with its 189 member countries to eliminate poverty and reduce inequality. We do this by providing finance, loans and grants for development projects, and by transferring knowledge from countries that have successful development experience to share, as Korea does to those countries that are still facing acute development challenges. Cities are a critical focus of our poverty reduction work. Why is that? Well, we know that for most countries, urbanization is an important contributor to being able to tackle poverty and inequality. We know that an increasing share of global income is generated in cities, and we know that cities can be incubators for innovation, providing the impetus for finding technological solutions to development problems. Let me give you a few numbers. Today, more than 50% of the world's population lives in urban areas. Over the next two decades, the world's urban population is likely to increase by one and a half times, adding two billion urban residents and putting the world's urban population at around six billion people. 
Cities contribute more than 80% of global GDP, and this number should increase more than proportionately with the increase in urban population if we consider the opportunities for urban workers to engage in higher productivity economic activities. And the benefits that cities bring through innovation should accelerate this productivity dividend even further. Just look at the city around us, Seoul, which has reinvented itself over the past 70 years. Firstly, as a manufacturing hub, then as a technology hub, and increasingly as a financial, education, and cultural hub. The range of work and leisure opportunities that this city offers us is truly extraordinary, inconceivable to many who lived here only one or two generations ago. It's probably only a small exaggeration to say that cities are important for everything. And for the World Bank Group specifically, they're important for poverty reduction. But we also know that cities can increase or entrench inequality if the benefits they offer are not available to all citizens. We see some of this in Seoul, of course, and I know that the national government in Korea and the metropolitan governments are working hard to ensure that these imbalances are tackled for groups that are at risk of missing out. But we also need to remember that many of the countries now going through the process of urbanisation are lower or middle income countries. In many cases, they lack the administrative, physical and technological infrastructure that we're privileged to enjoy here in Korea. To them, urbanisation is a great opportunity, of course, but it also presents risks. The World Bank Group works with these countries to seize the benefits of urbanisation and to manage those risks. As I mentioned, we can help finance worthy development projects and we can also help with transferring the knowledge of what has and has not worked in other places. The office I lead here in Korea is privileged to work with partners like Professor Huang and SNU to do exactly that. From today's discussion, I hope to get some ideas on how we can use cutting edge technologies to do an even better job of this work. Professor Huang has spoken to me previously about the opportunities presented by things like digital twins and the metaverse. You know, I can't say that I understand all of what he tells me. I'm only an economist after all. But I can see that we need to understand how these technologies and others like them might allow us to magnify the benefits offered by our current cities and perhaps even allow us to reimagine cities in a way that's more decentralized physically but more connected digitally. It's my privilege to be here today with such distinguished and knowledgeable people on the stage and in the audience, online as well. My congratulations again to our hosts, and I wish you all a productive and thought-provoking forum. Come somebody down. Please give a big round of applause to Mr. Jason Alfo. Thank you very much for your inspirational remarks. Now, for the second congratulatory remarks, I'd like to invite Mr. Moon Song Yoo onto the stage. He is a Deputy Minister for Territorial and Urban Development in Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport of the Republic of Korea. Especially, he will deliver his remarks in Korean, so if needed, please use the receiver placed on the table for simultaneous interpretation. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Moon Song Yoo. Uh, 여러분 반갑습니다. 저는 uh, 대한민국의 국토교통부 국토도시실장 문성유라고 합니다. Uh, 지속 가능한 스마트 도시를 위한 해법을 찾아가는 글로벌 스마트 시티 리더십 포럼의 개최를 uh, 진심으로 축하드립니다. Uh, 기후 변화로 인한 자연 재난이나 uh, 새로운 전염병의 유행, uh, 도시화에 따른 자원 고갈과 사회적 갈등들. 아, 오늘날 도시들이 어, 경험하고 있는 위기를 극복하고 긍정적 변화를 만들기 위해서 전 세계의 다양한 기관에서 참석해 주신 스마트 시티 리더들을 환영합니다. 아, 오늘 포럼을 준비해 주신 서울대학교 황준석 교수님과 관계자 여러분들께도 깊은 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 아, 스마트 도시는 AI, 빅데이터, 메타버스 등 첨단 기술을 활용한 혁신적인 서비스가 개발되고 실증되는 플랫폼입니다. 아, 특히 디지털 트윈과 메타버스는 최근 도시에서 발생할 수 있는 각종 상황을 시뮬레이션하고 또 최적의 솔루션을 찾는 데 아, 효과적으로 활용될 것으로 기대하고 있습니다. 아, 한국의 경우에 아, 전주시 효자동은 도시 지형과 도로, 지하시설물, 또 수목, 건물 등 기반 시설에 대한 정보를 디지털화하고 사물 인터넷 기술과 연계해서 가상 도시를 구축하고 있고 이를 통해서 도시 문제를 
예측하고 분석하고 또 진단, 해결하는 디지털 트윈 도시 모델을 운영하고 있습니다. 아, 디지털 트윈 도시에 구축된 화재 시뮬레이션이라든지 하천 모니터링 그리고 지하 매설물 모니터링 등 아, 다양한 서비스는 도시의 화재나 홍수, 교통사고 등 각종 재난과 사고를 예방하고 효과적으로 대응하는 데 크게 기여하고 있습니다. 아, 또한 서울시에서 구축한 메타버스 서울시청 같은 경우는 아, 시민 아바타가 가상의 서울시청을 방문해서 의견을 제시할 수 있도록 하고 있어서 아, 시민 참여를 통한 도시민주주의에 새로운 가능성을 제시해주고 있습니다. 아, 미래 도시인들에게 있어서 이 메타버스는 도시 서비스를 위한 실증 공간을 넘어서 삶이 일부가 되고 있기 때문에 아, 메타버스 공간을 어떻게 만들어 가는지는 도시민들의 삶의 직, 질과도 어, 직결되는 문제라고 할수 있겠습니다. 아, 혁신 기술을 활용하는 스마트 도시에서 강과되어서는 안 되는 것이 포용성입니다. 혁신 기술은 기술을 잘 모르는 사람들도 편리하게 활용할 수 있고 소외되는 사람들이 없을 때 더욱 의미가 있다고 할수 있겠습니다. 아, 오늘 이 포럼을 통해서 전 세계의 사례와 경험들이 활발히 논의되어서 더 나은 스마트 도시를 위한 글로벌 협력과 리더십을 공고히 하는 계기가 되기를 바랍니다. 감사합니다. Thank you very much. Please give a big round of applause, Mr. Moon Song Yoo. Thank you very much for your meaningful remarks. Last but not least, we are going to watch a congratulatory virtual message delivered by Mr. Darren Soto, Congressman and U.S. House of Representative of the 9th Congressional District of Florida. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Darren Soto. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World Smart City Expo of 2022. Thank you for being part of this historic event. I enjoyed visiting Korea and learning more about your amazing country back in July 2021. It was my second visit since I've been in Congress. I do so because we believe the U.S.-Korean relationship is so important and we must continue to strengthen our ties in areas like military, culture, vaccines, and of course, technology and commerce. In Florida's 9th Congressional District in Central Florida, we support and welcome Korean partners, especially in technology, partners to help out in our amazing center of innovation, Neo City, right here in Osceola County. Neo City has been spearheading innovation for economic prosperity and job creation, particularly in the semiconductor industry. We know microchips are so critical we also know that Korea is one of the greatest producers of microchips in the world. And so this partnership is really important to us. I also get to serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee. And we work directly with Department of Commerce and other key players in the microchip manufacturing and research uh, movement here in the United States. Uh, and was proud to work on the U.S. Innovation Technology Act. Chips for America, I'm excited to say, just passed, uh, and uh, it means that we're gonna see a huge boost in domestic production. I would note that subsidiaries here in the United States of Korean companies are eligible for these grants along with other US-based companies. And so we strongly encourage you to consider expanding uh, right here in Neo City to take advantage of this great opportunity to expand uh, microchip manufacturing footprints here in Central Florida. We also just recently were awarded round one of the Build Back Better Innovation Grant. Round one allows us to apply for round two, upwards of $72 million to expand the equipment at our current fabricator at Neo City in a partnership with Skywater, Lockheed Martin, IMEC, and other institutions. We know with your help, we can see other fabricators rise from the ground along with the smart city development we're developing right now uh, to make sure to meet the need for both the United States and across uh, the world for microchips. 
we have confidence that Korean investment in Osceola County will meet job goals and will bring prosperity to both countries. We have ample manufacturing and office space. We have Valencia College and the University of Central Florida to help with the talent pipeline. And we are ready to help you expand right here in Osceola County. And geography is everything. Just recently, I had the Korean ambassador in our office right before a historic flight with SpaceX and Korea uh, to the International Space Station. Uh, this follows up on key conversations I had with President Moon just about a year ago to increase the space partnership. We are already making space and aerospace microchips right in Neo City. That is our expertise. And so if you're looking to expand, we are the perfect location for that. We also happen to be just a few miles away from Cape Canaveral, the busiest spaceport in the world. Together with the United States and Korea, working here in Neo City at Cape Canaveral and other areas, the sky is the limit. Please give a big round of applause to Mr. Darren Soto. Thank you very much for your wonderful remarks. Now, it's a great pleasure that I welcome Mr. Don Fisher, County Manager of Osceola County in Florida. He will deliver a Volsor keynote speech entitled Insights for a New City in Osceola County, Florida. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Don Fisher. Hi, I'm Don Fisher, Osceola County Manager. Welcome to Neo City. Thank you for the opportunity to present before the Global Smart City Leadership Forum of 2022. I'd like to cover a bit about where Osceola County is with relation to the state of Florida. Uh, this slide shows that we are located in central Florida. Florida is the third largest state in the United States with a population of approximately 21 million people. Osceola County is the sixth largest county in the state by land mass. We are 1,500 square miles and have two cities located within our jurisdiction, the cities of Kissimmee and the cities of St. Cloud. Osceola County is the third fastest growing county in the United States. Uh, from the 2010 census, Osceola grew 45% uh, to a population of 400,000 by 2020. I would say that the population today is 450,000 and we can continue to grow at a fast pace. And in fact, by 2040, our population will increase by another 55%. Our economy is really reliant upon uh, agriculture and tourism. We have some of the largest cattle operations in the United States, and we also uh, have the 10th highest collector of something called tourism development taxes in the U.S. Uh, we also uh, well, we have located within our, our jurisdiction Walt Disney World, which I'm sure you have all have heard of that. Because we're so reliant on tourism, uh, during COVID pandemic, we reached 31% unemployment. That was the third highest in the United States. So in 2012, recognizing uh, that as an issue and to put another leg in our economy, the Osceola County Commission decided to invest and diversify, in addition to tourism and agriculture, into the manufacturing and research areas. We did that by acquiring a property in 2012 called Judge Farms. It's depicted on the right-hand side. This is an old rendering of what it had looked like at one time. Judge Farms was slated to be a residential development with 440 homes around some retention ponds. It is located between the cities of Kissimmee and St. Cloud in the heart of Osceola County. The way we acquired the property was by agreeing with a developer that owned the Judge Farms site to build in another area of the county something called Point Santa Parkway, a toll facility, which we since agreed to do in exchange for the home developer giving us the property that was called Judge Farms and is now called Neo City. Neo City is a 500 acre campus located in Central Florida that uh, currently has uh, several buildings located on site that I'm gonna cover with you in just a moment. I'll go through a presentation, but as you see here, uh, we are uh, located next to Disney, but we also have three universities that are very close by, the University of Central Florida, University of South Florida, and University of Florida. Within 120 miles of the site, there are 500,000 university students at any given time. 
Let me tell you more about NeoCity. Following the impacts of the Great Recession, Osceola County decided to make a long-term investment to create a 500-acre technology district known as NeoCity to diversify our economy. Located in the heart of Central Florida, NeoCity is strategically located with proximity to Orlando, major universities, and America's only spaceport, seaport, airport, and rail grouping. Osceola County, the state of Florida, and our regional partners have invested over $273 million to make NeoCity the hub to Central Florida's burgeoning semiconductor industry. NeoCity's anchor building, the Center for Neovation, which is owned by the county, consists of 36,000 square feet of clean room space. It is one of the most technologically advanced manufacturing research centers in the Western Hemisphere and specializes in a form of semiconductor manufacturing called advanced packaging which greatly reduces a microchip size, weight, and energy consumption. It's the home of Skywater Technology, IMEC USA, Bridge, and Seuss Microtech. Only three buildings currently exist in Neo City, with the remaining campus sitting pad ready with greenfield sites. The county's intentionally preserving and holding these greenfields for semiconductor industries and to take advantage of funding opportunities like Chips for America, NIST Manufacturing USA, and the Build Back Better Regional Challenge. Neo City is unique in that the county owns the land with no debt and with no carrying cost, resulting in the county being able to leverage economic development incentives to create high-tech, high-wage jobs and growth in the semiconductor industry. Neo City is located entirely within a federally designated opportunity zone. The advanced packaging processes stood up in Neo City is unique because the focus is on manufacturing at low volume, highly customized chips that are highly sought after in aerospace, defense, and medical industries. Large-scale commercial fabs do not make these types of chips. In fact, 98% of these are made offshore. As it indicated, Neo City is centrally located. As you can see from this map, we are 20 minutes from the Orlando International Airport. We are just down the road from the Space Coast where there's the rocket launches that take place. And nearby is SunRail, the local commuter rail line of 61 miles that goes through the heart of Central Florida, connecting Neo City to downtown Orlando. There are currently three tenants on site. Uh, there's the Center for Neovation, which is the fabrication facility, uh, the OC office building that currently houses IMEC and Skywater Technology, and then next door, Neo City Academy, a public high school that is a school of choice uh, that has 600 high school students. A unique thing about uh, Neo City Academy is that four interns actually worked for Skywater during the summer in receive paychecks while doing that. It's a very unique opportunity. Florida does have a talent base. Uh, many people think that all of our jobs are just uh, theme park related since we have Universal Orlando, Disney World, and SeaWorld. But we are also the number one ranking for state higher education, number three for bachelor's degrees awarded, and then 4,900 U.S. patents have been awarded on an annual basis. So why Neo City? Neo City is located in an opportunity zone, which is a way to defer capital gains taxes. We have a skilled workforce. As I've indicated, there's 500,000 university students with 120 miles of this campus and connectivity located 20 minutes from the Orlando International Airport and one and a half miles from Florida's Turnpike and right near the Sun Rail Commuter Line Station. During the master planning for Neo City, we contracted with a planning group named Perkins and Will. And several components were driven and continue to remain through the design of Neo City. One of the most important components, however, are, is Smart City. And because we have yet to determine what full components for Smart City get implemented and why we're interested in being part of this forum, what we did do is that we're ready for Smart City components. So we've put conduit through the right of way and sleeved everything so it's ready to take whether it's fiber optics or, or we don't know what it might be but certainly smart street lights smart uh, traffic signals and pedestrian movements as well so we look forward to learning more and being able to implement those components into this green field known as neo city we do have uh, five million dollars that's been set aside through the american recovery act that we are implementing an autonomous shuttle between the sun rail station in downtown Kissimmee to Neo City. We are evaluating the best providers of the service. We are looking throughout the world in terms of the best LIDAR and other components to make it a successful autonomous shuttle. For further updates, uh, we currently have a developer for the phase one, that, that area you see in green, 
uh, for a city center. When Perkins and Will master planned the entirety of, of Neo City, we knew that we would have to have things beyond just research and manufacturing, that we would have to have places to live, work, play, restaurants, coffee shops, office buildings, and so forth. So we've uh, contracted with Siami Construction and Minskoff uh, developers out of Manhattan, and this is their vision through shop architects of what the Neo City City Center is to look like. So this is an aerial view of the site, drilling down closer to the central plaza, which is the, that, that pond area that you see there that would be controlled water level with a promenade walking around its exterior and at the north end of that as well. What you see here is a performing art center that will be publicly owned and operated, but again, to add to that nightlife, and please don't miss the plane that is getting ready to land on the parking garage that's over there as part of a veloport. And then further renderings of what the city center is to look and feel like. Other recognitions that Neo City has received, Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, just awarded Osceola County $6 million toward Neo City to build an important piece of infrastructure, Neovation Way. Neovation Way will connect to the southerly end of the property to where a lot of residential is located to get the workforce, can easily uh, get to the Neo City property, and Center for Neovation in the city center. Further news is the uh, Semiconductor Coalition through the Build Back Better Regional Challenge, and I'm hoping there's some opportunities to work with SNU and others uh, to, to further this effort. So the, the Build Back Better Regional Challenge is a, it's actually a federal program through the Economic Development Administration of the Department of Commerce for the federal government, where a billion dollars was set aside for the nation to compete for ideas that would bring uh, innovation and jobs to any given area that might, might seek the award. So there were 529 applications that were made throughout the United States, and it was shortlisted down to 60. Osceola County is one of those 60. And in fact, out of Florida, there were 17 applications that were the only application to make it out of the state of Florida. Our coalition partners are the Orlando Economic Partnership, the University of Central Florida, and Bridge comprise the Central Florida Coalition for Semiconductors. The list of projects the coalition is pursuing are seven. The first project we are pursuing is expansion of the fabrication facility. Right now, half of the clean room, the 36,000 square feet that I'd mentioned before, has yet to be fitted with plumbing and, and HVAC and, and other components that it takes to operate a clean room. We are seeking $32 million as part of the application to finish out that fab space. We are seeking $6 million to, to, to finish funding Neovation Way, the project that I'd mentioned that will connect the southerly end of Neo City to a lot of residential development, bringing the workforce to the site. The next project is the advanced packaging component, which is $16 million to provide the tools that will go inside the clean room that was part of the, the expansion of the fab. And those tools will be able to complete advanced packaging operations within the Center for Neovation. The next is a digital twin. UCF will serve as the lead for this project. It will purchase modeling and simulation equipment to develop a real-time digital twin of the Center for Neovation in its semiconductor production line. This will allow for real-time feedback on chip integration, allowing for more efficient semiconductor production lines. The next project, number five, Upskill Workforce, led by the Orlando Economic Partnership, this project will expand and scale a skills-based workforce development program that will leverage unique analytics to help the cluster's industry partners recognize and hire workers without traditional academic credentials, like a bachelor's degree who may otherwise would have been overlooked. Project number six, is Catalyst Osceola. Led by the Orlando Economic Partnership, they will establish a cluster management organization to make external alignments between the coalition, industry, and academia. And finally, project number seven is Coalition Governance and Community Outreach, led by Osceola County. This project establishes the internal governance structure for the coalition and will ensure the community's voice is heard within the coalition through workshops and community outreach with community stakeholders. Our coalition and collection of projects have attracted from partners uh, that you see here on this slide, and it's a pretty robust group of academia and private sector and local government agencies as well. As part of the Build Back Regional Challenge, we were in Washington, D.C., a group of us, 
at a conference with regard to the Build Back Challenge, and we spoke to the National Science Foundation Regional Innovation Engines Program, the, the lead to that program, and they knew of our Build Back Better application, and they strongly encouraged us to apply for the NSF Regional Innovations Engines Program, and we did. And in this competition, we could receive up to $160 million awarded over a 10-year period. We made application, and we've made it through phase one. We are now into phase two, refining our, our application, and that hopefully over the next 12 months, we will receive an award to help further expand NeoCity. And then big news with regard to onshoring semiconductor manufacturing uh, to the United States in partnership with our alliance countries. The CHIPS Act was adopted by Congress and signed by President Biden uh, in 2022, just about a month ago. And it is $54.2 billion that's set aside to make that effort of manufacturing chips back in the U.S. along with its alliance partners. So as a result of that, we've been seeing an awful lot of activity take place of companies coming forward wanting to do things in Neo City, which is all the more important for us to get our smart city components into the ground. And the importance of a global alliance with the United States and South Korea that we support and welcome Korean partners, especially for, through innovation and technology. The experiences that we've had with SNU and, and other companies uh, from Korea has been outstanding. Seoul National University and GRC's commitment to Neo City is welcome and greatly appreciated. We've received letters of support and interest from Samyung SNC and Smart Radar Systems. And we've been working with the uh, Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, who runs the Orlando International Airport, about direct flights to, from Asia to Orlando, and thus being 20 minutes away, I think we'd all benefit greatly from that type of relationship. Finally, uh, the, the county did something uh, innovative when it came, comes to workforce development. Uh, we believe that education is the strongest tool toward building a strong economy. Uh, the County Commission recognizes that. They set aside $12.4 million and gave it to Valencia College for scholarships for all graduating high school seniors. So every graduating high school senior receives free tuition toward a two-year degree through Valencia College or to Osceola Technical College, OTEC, for a certification program. And they have five years within which to complete that degree or certification. One of the things that uh, the Commission and Valencia are, are asking and, and challenging is can we continue to do that year after year after year? And that's something that I'm working on to get that, that done. But it's really great to see the look on the, the, the faces of some of these young people that may have never got an opportunity to get a college degree or a certification and to have that paid for. It's been enlightening and really a fantastic thing for our community. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope that you'll be first to what's next. Please give a big round of applause to Mr. Don Fisher. From his keynote speech on Osceola County and New York City, we can have learned his leadership and commitment to the unique opportunity for innovation and advanced manufacturing, and the importance of a global alliance to implement smart city in New York City. I appreciate your speech giving us in-depth insights.